everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I really want to share with you some of my favorite tips for arriving healthy and fresh to your holiday destination after a long haul flight. So if you've been following my social media recently, you know that myself and Danny have just come back from a holiday to Singapore and to Sydney, Australia. And believe me, those flights are insane. But over time, we've gotten really, really good at mastering the long haul flight, making sure we arrive fresh and healthy and ready to take on our holiday on that very first day. If you have any tips of your own for surviving a long haul flight, please don't forget to leave them in the comment section below so we can all learn together to make those long haul flights that bit easier. And if you do like this video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and also hit subscribe for more videos like this one. So my first tip is to get organized. Grab yourself a pen and paper before you leave and write out the things that you think you will need on your flight. And by that, I mean your toiletries, things that are gonna help you feel super fresh while you're on those 13, 14, 15 hour flights so you don't feel disgusting, literally. There is nothing worse than sitting in your seat for hours on end and feeling absolutely disgusting because you can't brush your teeth because you didn't bring your toothbrush. I always carry this little bag of toiletries with me and there is no liquid in here which makes going through security that bit easier but you still have everything that you need these are all also zero waste products for anybody who is wondering so i'll just open this up and i'll show you what is in here so in my little baggie i always keep my bamboo toothbrush and some lush toothy tabs a soap this one is fresh pharmacy from lush i have obviously used it on my holidays but it stood the test of time this is packed with chamomile so it's really calming on the skin and it also has moisturizing properties so when that plain air conditioning is stripping your face of all the moisture that just helps to lock some of it in and alongside my soap, I will always take a face cloth, my Tevra gloss, which is a zero waste floss, my lip balm, retainers, and as somebody who is prone to cold sores, I don't like to travel without some complete cold sore patches. Also really handy to have. I like to have my eye mask. They are not provided on all long haul flights. I like to use my own because it is reusable and avoids that plastic waste of opening up a new eye mask just to leave it on the plane. I would also think about what kind of entertainment you like. If you're somebody who likes to listen to music, then make sure you have your headphones and you have your music downloaded. For me, I love to listen to audible books. So I downloaded a new audible before I left on holiday. So I had something to listen to while I was on the plane. If the movie selection wasn't that great which to be fair on the flight to Singapore it really was quite poor and I ended up listening to about eight hours of Maeve Binchy's Tara Road. Now I'm sure you've heard this next tip time and time again but it is so important that you make sure you move around the cabin regularly. The recommended is that you get up every 20 to 30 minutes but obviously depending on where you're sitting that might not always be possible. If the guy beside you decides he wants to take a snooze and you're gonna have to do some George of the Jungle climbing out over his lap aim to get up and move around the cabin at least once per hour, walk up and down the aisles, do some stretches, and if you literally can't get up, just in your seat, make sure you're twirling your ankles, you're moving your legs, that will help to lower your risk of DVT, which is deep vein thrombosis, and blood clots. And there are some categories of people who will be more at risk to DVT and blood clotting than others, so if you're a smoker or somebody who takes the contraceptive pill, be mindful of that and keep moving. But one thing that I did find incredibly, incredibly helpful to avoid that swelling, if you're somebody who swells tons when you fly is to actually wear a pair of flight socks. So these are shoal compression socks. We just bought these from Amazon. Two pairs came. So mom took one pair and I took the other. Honestly, I cannot praise these enough. They were absolutely fantastic. I am somebody who swells a ton when I fly. And it's one of the things that I really don't look forward to about going on holidays is landing and literally being twice the size because my legs have swollen so much. It felt good to arrive feeling like myself. So these are clinically proven to help prevent deep vein thrombosis DVT, help prevent swollen ankles and tired aching legs, which again, from sitting down so long, you could be at risk of. And to give yourself the best chance of being able to move around the cabin, try and reserve an aisle seat on check-in, which will mean that you can get up and down a ton easier than you would if you were stuck beside the window. And also, if you are a couple traveling together, I would advise reserving the middle seat and the aisle seat because it means that somebody is less likely to actually reserve the seat inside. You get extra space to move your legs and you're also less likely to be disturbed if you do want to catch a couple of Z's. My next couple of tips kind of run into each other all in the sense of making sure you stay hydrated. When you are on an airplane the air in the cabin actually comes from outside the plane and there is very little moisture in that air and that combined with the cabin pressure means that you are at risk of becoming dehydrated very very fast. So the recommendations go that you should drink as much water as you possibly can before the flight 
bring your own reusable bottle, which I always advocate anyway, to make sure that you do not have to rely on the air hostesses to get you your little 100 ml plastic cup of water and just drink water, drink water and drink water throughout the flight. You will feel less fatigued, less headachey and less groggy in general. And as a side note, that means you should probably stay away from tea, coffee, alcohol, soft drinks, anything that will act as a diuretic and flush the body of all that water that you were working so hard to keep in there. It can all feel a bit counterintuitive because the alcohol on long haul and international flights tends to be free. Luckily, I'm not a big drinker, so it's very easy for me to say no to alcohol. But for some people, I know that might be a bit like, oh, what about holidays, I want to have a drink. Yes, you do, but you also want to arrive feeling fresh and ready. Also in your larger carry-on, I would make sure you pack a change of clothes so you can change halfway through the flight. Even a change of underwear and a change of t-shirt will make you feel more fresh. And that will also be a lifesaver in the hopefully really, really unlikely event that they actually lose your cases at the airport, which I know happens to people all the time. My next tip for surviving your long haul flight is to try and avoid sodium. This goes along with making sure you stay hydrated and avoiding diuretics. Sodium is going to mean you retain water and you arrive fluffier than you would anyway. And the ways you can avoid sodium is by not accepting the free pretzels that the air hostess will give out at the start of the flight by making clever choices when it comes to your plain food. I know some people are really picky eaters and they don't touch the plain food at all. I actually really love any kind of food, like I just love food, so I eat whatever's put in front of me if I'm not prepared. So I tend to pack some of my own snacks, meaning that I don't have to eat the full meal that is provided on the plane and I also opt for a vegan vegetarian meal to try and do my best to make sure that I'm not consuming a ton of sodium on the flight. Obviously, as somebody who's incredibly into fitness and zero wasting, that means that I have control over what I'm eating and also how much plastic that I'm consuming while on a long haul flight. My next tip almost goes without saying for me, but I know a lot of people like to travel really styled up and really dolled up. My advice would be to not wear any makeup at all and just go bare faced with your moisturizer. It will make it a ton easier to allow your skin to breathe. It also makes less work for you throughout the flight if you don't have to remove your makeup, reapply you can literally just freshen up before bed instead of having to remove your whole face of makeup and also I would avoid wearing clothing like jeans or anything that's tight that's going to cause you discomfort if you're on a 13 14 hour flight that's the last thing you want so I always tend to travel in a hoodie and a pair of leggings also some loose fitting runners or a pair of flip-flops you might not look like the most stylish person on the plane, but you are certainly going to be the most comfortable. It actually also means that you can wear these socks quite a bit easier as well. If you can just pull your legging or your tracksuit bottom up over your knee and pop them on, just makes life easier than having a pair of jeans. You're trying to take the jeans off, put the socks on. It's just a whole other ordeal you do not need. My next tip is to actually be rested in the days prior to your travel. So if you're somebody who goes to the gym regularly, like I do, try and do a lighter gym session because going on a long haul flight is going to actually inhibit your body's ability to recover quickly. So you're going to arrive a lot more fatigued and a lot more tired in your muscles than you normally would. And you also don't want to get on a long haul flight absolutely wrecked and knackered. You kind of do want to be rested before you even get on board to give yourself the best chance of recovery and feeling good throughout that flight. On days before I do a long flight I would tend to do an extra bit of cardio walking and running in the morning especially if I know that I'm going to be traveling and sitting down for a long period of time and I may not get my steps in for that day it feels really good to know that you've got the blood pumping a little bit and you don't feel as slobby and as horrible as you would if you just sat on that flight for 17 hours straight so that brings me to the end of this video everybody I really hope you enjoyed it and there's a couple of things in here that might be helpful if you are about to head off and jet off on your travels I'm very jealous I hope you have a fantastic time if you did like this video and you found it helpful please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and also please don't forget to hit subscribe and i look forward to seeing you back on my channel again bye